Hi, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and today's project is using the very brand new Color My Flowers stamp set from Josette Vandenberg over at Elizabeth Craft Designs in a mixed media Valentine. So I've got a lot to share. Um, there's a lot happening in this, um, so it's a little bit longer video, but please stick with me. Now I've got this uh, Hertz and Paws stencil taped down on top of a piece of 4x9 watercolor paper from Elizabeth Craft Designs, and I'm using my little paint palette knife to uh, spread some molding paste through the openings in the stencil and then sort of cleaning off the extra and then I'm going to peel up the stencil carefully to reveal the pattern. So there's the first one and I'm going to do this three times on across this piece of paper. So the paper is four inches wide so um, I think I do cut it down, I did cut it down to five and a half for this and then I will die cut it out a little bit later um, to give it a little more decorative edge and so you're going to see me peel up the second so that's the second application and then here's the third one and I did let the dry in between each application so hmm, I don't know is it probably about an hour of dry time between each application so if you're going to do something like this you have to be somewhat patient but I really love the way it turned out so I was pretty happy with it. So that is the background, sort of the base coat of the background. So those are dimensional hearts on there now. Now these are the brand new Color My Flowers stamps. They are so cool. <laughs> and, and I'm only going to color three of the different flowers. I'm not going to color them all. Um, but so the three color flowers, three types of flowers that I use, I color the same way. So this first one, I'm calling the pink flower. I started out with coloring some 25 pink. These are my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers and then I've stamped them onto some Arches Hot Press watercolor paper. So this is um, like a smooth watercolor paper and a high high quality. And so now I'm just taking water on my brush and I'm pulling out the color from the center because I wanted the center to be pretty pretty deep color and then the outer edge to be uh, pretty light. And now on my purple flower, I'm going to do the exact same thing on those outer petals, color some 80 violet right along that um, sort of middle ring, and then use water on my brush to pull that color out um, into each entire petal. So nothing fancy, no fancy technique happening at all. Um, it's just really some simple um, color and use, your, use water on a brush to pull out the color. And now in this middle layer, I'm using uh, light pink, 26 light pink, and doing the exact same thing. So I colored it around the center and I'm just pulling the color all the way out with the water brush. And then I will take 51 lemon yellow and do the same thing on that third layer of the flower. And there is like a fourth, there's a fourth and fifth on the center, but I'm going to use um, some glitter dots on the centers of those flowers. And then on these little ones, I started off with 50 yellow and pulled that out with some water um, and wound up thinking that was a little dark. So I did go back to 51 lemon yellow on the other two flowers that I did for that. Now there are two styles of leaves. So on this style, I used I base coat um, both leaves with some 47 May green which you can see is kind of like a, a really bright medium green, I guess we'll say. And I really wanted some very, very bright colored flowers for this card. So you can see I kind of, I definitely went bright. Now that was some 45 pale green that I started off with just kind of, kind of scribbling over the middle sections. And now I'm going over the stripes and the, or the, I don't know, veins, I guess they are <laughs> with the 47 May green. And I'll also go around the outside edge with that and so that is how I do the uh, that style of leaf and then on the other style of leaf I'm going to come in with some 41 light green and go around the outer edge and then add a little bit to the middle or actually darken up the middle with the 47 may green again so those are the styles of leaves now the centers on my pink flowers I'm using some nouveau glitter drops in purple rain and then on the center of my purple flower I put a pink and silver glitter dot and then on those little yellow flowers, I actually I use some bubblegum blush Nouveau drops on those as well. And now my sentiment is Happy Valentine's Day from the Josette Love sentiments that I stamped on some 85 pound uh, soft finish cardstock in white using VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And now I've got my background piece and it is dried. All of the molding paste is dry and I'm using Distress Stain. So that first color was picked raspberry and then this is Wilted Violet and I'm just kind of stamping it around as you can see sort of randomly. And then I'm gonna spray it with water to get it to start to run. And you can see that the molding paste has a dimension to it. So there is a 
bit of a resist effect happening with the stain. Not completely, um, but somewhat. And so I'm going to go back and forth here for a, for a couple different coats, adding the picked raspberry and the wilted violet and, um, you know, spraying it and like sort of dabbing off the hearts a little bit to try to keep the hearts a little bit lighter than the background um, until I get a fairly vibrant background uh, that you see here. So now I've done it like at least another coat on there. And now I'm adding brushed pewter. So you have to shake that up because it's got metallic in it. And I'm just going to stamp this kind of randomly and again, spray it with water. And this is going to give it kind of like a pearlescent silver shine. And as it runs, it kind of runs across and I'm dabbing this around with my finger um, to kind of spread that pearlescent -y silver quality here and there. And then I'm going to go back and add more of the pink and more or picked raspberry and more of the wilted violet to kind of, again, darken down those colors, get the background pretty intense. I really wanted this to be very, very bright. And then here I'm going to add, darken up the edges and then add more to kind of continue to fill in the bottom edges. Um, and I will spray a little more water here to get things moving. And then again, use my finger, my fa you know, one of the best tools we own, our finger, uh, fingers to kind of blend things around and get like a nice purpley pink and silvered mottled look to the background. And then I'm gonna try to dab off the hearts a little bit, which it does work, but um, they, they do kind of blend back. So I took some of this um, silver wax that I've got and it's this is discontinued. So I do link to a different um, brand in the, supply list, which is in the video description. Um, but that kind of worked to help separate the hearts a little bit from the background. And now I'm taking some gesso and it's really, really watered down there. It's hard to tell on the craft mat, but it's really watered down. So it's pretty translucent. And I'm just using my finger to basically dab it on top of the hearts. So there's two reasons for this. First, the white helps separate it out from the background you know, creates contrast. And then that silver wax kind of shows through the very translucent -y white and, and adds a very shiny, pretty finish to those hearts that you can sort of see there. And then to really help them stand out, I decided to take my Copic liner and just kind of scribble around them very loosely, just following the edges um, to make them, to outline them basically from the background. And then of course I gotta have splatter. So, <laughs> This is Art Anthology Gold Metal Effects paint, and I'm watering it down and I'm splattering it onto the background, and that's a very, very bright gold. And then I'm taking my Tonic Nouveau Drops again in Purple Rain, and then the pink is going to be Sherbert Shimmer, and I'm going to like kind of dot these around randomly to sort of pull out the purple and pink colors that I've got going um, in the background. And they're kind of messed up, so I'm fixing it with my tweezers. And then I'll go to the <laughs> Sherbert Shimmer, which is a glittery pink. And then f eventually I will wind up adding some um, glitter drops or glitter dots, sorry, to the back of this as well to kind of pull the glitter dots from the flowers into the background. And more splatter with my Picket Fence spray stain for a little bit of white splatter because I don't know, something about splatter and mixed media, I gotta have it. So <laughs> there you go. And I do dab off some of the bigger splatters with a baby wipe. Okay, so here's my card base. So it's an A2 size out of 100 pound soft finish cardstock. There is my completed background, and I have die cut that out now using the second largest die in the stitched rectangles die set. And then here I've added some little glitter dots here you see around here and there to kind of pull in the glitter dots on the flowers. I die cut out the sentiment with the smallest die in the dotted scallop rectangles die set. And then I did stamp and color and fussy cut out this tiny little heart from the love sentiments as well. And the flowers and leaves have been die cut out using the matching dies. And you can see how pretty they are. They're amazing. Now the watercolor panel was a little bit warped. So I went a little nuts on the tape. <laughs> But I'm using 10 millimeter clear double-sided adhesive tape to tape this down to the front to give it a nice border all the way around. And you can see how I got that cascading hearts effect going around that background with between all those steps that you just saw me do. And I was pretty happy with it. And now I'm going to um, adhere down my flowers about like you see there. And then I have this tiny, the tiny heart is going to go in the lower left of the sentiment. And then the one yellow flower is going to go in the upper right. And I'm going to use some six millimeter clear double-sided adhesive tape on the back of this guy. And just stick him onto the, the top right corner of that Valentine's Day sentiment. And then I, I wanted to put some foam tape on this to pop it up because the flowers actually have a lot of dimension to them. 
just because they're kind of heavyweight watercolor paper and they're big and pretty. And so I thought some foam tape was necessary to kind of help help balance out um, the, the uh, sentiment with the big flowers up on top. And so now I'm going to use six millimeter clear double sided adhesive tape on the back of all of these flowers and I just put it in the center. I normally do this as you if you watch my videos you know I say um, don't put adhesive all over the back just put it in the middle because it, it helps like let the edges of the flowers just kind of pop off the page all on their own. Um, they will create their own dimension their own shadow if you don't adhere them down too much. And so that's what I did on all of these, except for this guy he gets a little bit of foam tape just to help him kind of blend in with those flowers at the top because the layers are getting pretty thick and I wanted that flower um, to stand out. So there, so I'm going to add him down <laughs> to the top edge like so. And then that bottom flower is kind of popping up. It doesn't want to stick. So I'm going to use some Zig 2 Eagle Pen on the very bottom edge of that guy just to hold it down a little bit to keep that um, stuck down nicely. And that is the completed project. And it's kind of unusual, definitely not your typical Valentine. I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> and you could really definitely adapt it quite easily for like a Mother's Day card, an Easter card, just change the sentiment and I think it would still work. I've been getting into mixed media lately as you probably know so I've been I was pretty excited about how this came out and I hope I inspired you a little bit um, that color my flower stamp set is available today on the Elizabeth craft designs uh, website along with some other great new releases from Josette Vandenberg so please check out the Elizabeth craft designs blog for the other design team projects that are there today that is linked in the video description um, as are the, all the supplies thanks so much for watching here are two more projects I have done for recent new releases from Elizabeth craft Designs. so please check those out and have an amazing day!